If you've been following this beginner's tutorial series, then you may have a song saved from the previous video on automation. If you don't, you can just download it from the download section of the Renoise website or directly with the link in this video's description. So using the disk browser, navigate to where you've stored the song and double click on it to load it in. This collection of note data is a pattern and songs are constructed by playing a sequence of these patterns which is handled by the pattern sequencer at the left of the interface. New blank patterns are created with the plus button while clones of existing patterns are created with the clone button. You can move around the sequence with the mouse scroll wheel while the pointer is in the pattern sequencer. The cloned pattern has all of the note data from the original pattern and has been given a new number to identify it. You can add text as well by dragging this separation bar to the right and typing into the boxes. It's possible to repeat patterns of the same number and these are exact copies of each other, meaning that any changes made to one is shared between them all. This is not true of cloned patterns, where you're just copying from one pattern into a new separate pattern. The other button here is for inserting section headers, an alternative to the text boxes and very handy for keeping things organised in longer songs. I've been mentioning that the note data is cloned and shared but this is also true of automation. By the way, this section here is the pattern matrix and can also be used for sequencing, but we won't go into that in this video. You can leave it open if you like. It does provide a nice graphical representation of what's happening within the tracks across the different patterns. Let's delete these patterns with the minus button and begin building a basic song structure. Select an empty instrument slot and load in a new instrument from the pad folder, Mind War. Rename the next track and enter edit mode with escape. We'll create a simple melody of C, G, D sharp, D in the fourth octave by moving from the start of the pattern to one quarter of the way down, to halfway, and then three quarters. This is easily achieved by using the F9 to F12 keys, and if you ever need to get to the end of the pattern, just hit the end key. Now expand upon this with a harmony in the same track by pressing the small plus button here, which adds a new note column. Record G, D sharp, G sharp, G in the fifth octave, and also go back to line 40 for an A sharp. Let's take a quick look at the Mind War instrument in the modulation tab of the sampler and play some notes. You can see that the volume quickly rises and is held at full volume as long as the key is held down. When let go, the volume gradually fades out. But when the song is played, new notes cut off the old ones, preventing them from fading out. The NNA option, which stands for New Note Action, controls this behaviour, so set it to Note Off instead of Cut, making it sound more realistic during the song. You might notice that the filter automation we created in the last video is a bit lacking in bass as the cutoff frequency moves up. This is working exactly as it should, but it is a bit excessive. So let's create a new automation for the EQ5 effect to boost the bass in time with the filter.
Ok, now we're good to clone this pattern and start making some changes to evolve the music. Symbols can be used in a variety of ways, but one of the most common is to announce a new section with a splash. So delete the one in the second pattern and insert a small kick and snare fill at the end. Left click on one of the numbers in the pattern sequencer and while holding control or command on the Mac, click on the other number. This will select them both. Now right click and select duplicate which clones both patterns. Select number 2 where we will adapt the notes of the bass line to the pad. Click and drag the second quarter of the bass track to select it. Open the advanced edit panel at the right and come down to the transpose section where you can easily change the selected notes. Press minus one five times until they move down to G. Then select the next four notes and press plus one until they move up to D sharp. Select the next four and make them G sharp. Then the next four to D and the final four up to G. Now select the entire bass track, though we only need the notes. And press Ctrl C to copy the selection. Move into pattern 3 and paste what was copied with Ctrl V. Though make sure you've moved to the top of the pattern with F9 since the content is pasted from the cursor position. The copy and paste commands should be familiar to you from other programs since they're pretty universal. Vnoise also supports some others. Control A will select all, Control X will cut, Control Z will undo, and Control Y will redo. Back at line 40, select these four notes and let's insert a slight variation by transposing them all the way down to A sharp. The quickest way is to go down a whole octave and then up by two notes. We're almost done now. All that's left is an intro and outro. So click, then control click the two new patterns and duplicate again. Now move into the master track which, as the name suggests, controls the entire song. Create an automation for the volume and use the mouse wheel to zoom out so you can see the last two patterns. Add some points so that the volume decreases in a straight line and it seems that the crossover point is about minus six decibels. We'd like the song to stop at the end of the final pattern instead of looping back to the beginning. So using the FX menu, insert a command to set the BPM to 0. OK, back to the start of the song and hit the plus button for a new blank pattern. Click once on this pattern, let go, then click and drag it to the top. Scroll to pattern 2 and select all of the notes from the top to line 31, except for the pad track. Control C to copy, scroll back to the new pattern, and Control V to paste the selection in. All of the patterns so far have been the default length of 64 lines, but we'll make the central half that at 32 lines using the value at the top left of the pattern editor. Now, it's important to realise that copying and pasting in the pattern editor only makes use of the note data, not the automation. So, let's create a simple but effective filter automation that falls into place. Finally, go back to pattern 2, copy the drum fill 
and paste it at the end of the intro. And we're done.